YouTube is Matt with Olympus Reptiles. We're continuing today and kind of introduce some of our holdbacks from 2018. So why don't we start with this girl right here. And that is a Champagne Inchy. Now, this actually wasn't my favorite Champagne Inchy. And I always say hold back the best example you get. And this is a really nice Champagne Inchy. Very heavily patterned, so what we were shooting for. But the other one we had, like it looked like something else was going on. There it was so stinking bright. The problem was... It was a male, and I was only needing a female. So I'm very happy to have her still. But in this instance, she actually wasn't the best example that I held back. I sold the best example because it was the wrong sex. And it's going to happen that way sometimes. That doesn't mean she's a bad example. Quite the opposite. Like I say, with Champagne Inchy, what you're really looking for is the Inchy is going to bring in a lot of pattern to Champagne. So Champagne typically lacks most pattern. It may have these spots in the back, and that's really it. This inchy gene brings in a lot of the side spots. You can see that pattern all the way through there. Really makes the snake much more interesting to look at if you want that pattern and that busyness. If you were looking for something really clean, you probably wouldn't want to bring that into it. So that is our champagne inchy. Of course, champagne, if you're going to work with champagne, you know, you got to know that there's some things on there. People talk about spider wobble, champagne can wobble, it's not as evident as spider. Also, you cannot mix champagne to spider, and you shouldn't mix champagne to champagne. Super champagnes are known to be lethal. Spider champagnes are known to be lethal, so you have to keep those genes separate. That's one of the reasons in my champagne that I only ever keep females. I don't own a male champagne, and I probably never will. I already got a lot of spider in my collection on both sides, and I love the spider. But with my champagne, I decided to keep only females so I'd never run into that problem of accidentally crossing them or, you know, like now, my back is hurt. And so I have other people having to go into my reptile room and work for me. Uh, we're not in breeding season yet. And I expect to be fully better by breeding season. But if I wasn't, and somebody else was making the pairings, and they didn't realize what they did, and they got my instructions wrong, and they stuck two champagnes together, who's that really on? I mean, I could sit and blame them all day long because, I mean, they're the ones that did it. But the fact of the matter is, it's still my animals. It's still my responsibility. And, and truth be told, that weight would be on my shoulders, not theirs. It's never on the person who's doing something for your shoulders. It's always on yours, right? So with that being said, by keeping only female champagne, even if they make a mistake and put the wrong animal to it, as long as I know which animal they put to it, I don't have any fear of dead babies. Now with my spider, obviously I could because I do have males and females, but spider is very, very easy to see and it's one of the first things we ever worked with. I don't think anybody in our crew would ever mistake spider for anything other than spider, so I, I wouldn't envision that problem. All right, question girl, any questions about this snake before we go to the next one? Not on this snake, no. Okay, let me put this one up and get the next one. All right, this next one is just a single gene snake, and it's a single gene pied. Uh, again, when you're talking females or males, it doesn't really matter, you can never have too many recessive animals in your collection. And a high-quality visual recessive animal is worth its weight in gold. Because I know that you know when I go to breed recessive, if I breed really, really nice, really nice recessive animals, I know I can sell them. It's something I don't really have to worry about. There's always going to be a market for albino. There's always going to be a market for pied. There's always going to be a market for ghost. Yeah, the price may fluctuate a little bit, but there's always going to be that market because a lot of people, it's going to sound terrible, but they're just a little too lazy to really work with the recessives and really you know keep the nicest ones back and, and go that long game when it's so much quicker to go with your, you know, incomplete dominance because you get visuals right away and it's easier right away and all of that whereas with this you know you've got to make your own hold back your own out cross i mean there's a lot of work that goes into breeding recessives more so than incomplete dominant genes but this will be our third female pied in our collection that we have we have one female up to size one i kept from last year and then this one from this year so let me show you why i kept her there's a couple reasons one her color if you can get her on her side here and you can really see all that orange in there we're working on making pumpkin pies eventually so with that you know and the, the yellow belly is going to bring out the orange i want to start with the most orange base i can start with so i'm looking for very bright and a lot of orange to begin my work i think it'll make better pumpkin pies the base 
animal you start with will make a difference in your end project. It's not just throwing two morphs together and hoping for the best. It's hand selecting the animal you use for the color that you need. So this will make an excellent base for that pumpkin pie. I also want when I do pumpkin pies them to be fairly heavily patterned. I'm not looking for an 80% white pumpkin pie. I'm more like 50-50. The thing I really like in them when the white is the banding. And you can see she shows the banding in her back third and then it kind of stops and she's low white after that. But that banding, I would love if that was all the way through. And that's what we're eventually going to work towards in our pumpkin pie project. All right. And I just, man, you can't have too many of these. So, you know, we'll, with three of them, we can always make pies and we can actually work in some other things. We'll have a fourth we're holding back this year that will be a female fire yellow belly het pie that we'll get to in another video that Question Girl chose because Pumpkin Pie is actually her project, not mine. All right, anything you want to add, dear? Um, when you were talking about the base gene that you're using with right. the pied, if this one has a lot of white, does that mean her offspring will have lots of white? You know, the conventional thinking forever and a day was that how much white it has is random. And low whites can throw high whites and high whites can throw low whites. And I do think that is still true. However, I do know some people have been working on trying to line breed these more and more to get that where they can predict how much white the babies will have. I think you can do that to an extent. I think if you have a high white to a high white, your chance of getting high white are probably better. Can you get one with a low white? Sure. Can you get a high white low to low? You can, but it's going to, the parents will pass on the color. They, they just do to certain extents. So with that being said, if you want to increase your odds of high white, you would want to save back the ones with the most white in your collection to breed back. It doesn't mean you'll get all high white babies. I think that's where that confusion came in. But your odds of reproducing that look are probably higher, I would say. I want to say it might be JKR that's been working with proving that you can line breed for amounts of white in a pie to a certain extent. What I'm looking for is not so much the amount of white, but again, it's the, the random banding. I like the banding. What I don't want to see is a snake that's colored to here and white the rest of the way down. It looks cool, but it's not my cup of tea when it comes to a pie. What I'd love to see is a band of white, band of color, band of white, band of color, band of white. Uh, the one we held back last year, I think, has five full bands of white, and that's what we're really looking for in our pies, is banding and then the base orange color. I really want that orange. All right, anything else, dear? No, that's it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We're going to hop off of here now and film the Patreon one. We'll see you all next week.